there. So here's your troubleshooting diagram. And then you change it. So you want it to go to another one. Is that assembly code? Uh, compare blocks. So it looks like oh, there's a lot not... of line of code. Mm. Let's have a look at the, the actual first page. It should tell us what it is. Um, 026 VAX VMS version 4.4 code. Oh. So this would be internal to digital. So this is actual the the VAX operating system by looks of things. And this is code compiled. This is the backup for the VAX from 1986. So that's obviously been changed. So it's a, a later compiled version. So here you go, VAX 11, Bliss 32. They're all different types of compiled. Yeah. And we've got literally hundreds of these these cards, so grab another one. So these are confidential to Digital Corporation. So these weren't publicly available and we would have them simply because of the fact that we had Digital's museum collection. I'll just adjust the, yeah, so here you go, what's this one? Feed wheel, ratchet and pour adjustment. So this would be for a particular printer, etc. Mm. So the ASR33. So the ASR33 is one of the, I think, most famous teletype. Right. Yeah. Preventative maintenance and troubleshooting guide by Digital Equipment Corporation, Massa at Maynard, Massachusetts. First edition, 1974. So these would have also been used to actually produce the physical manuals to print right. them. So they would have sent something like this out to the print company, who then used lithography to they print these out. Enlarge it and then put it on paper. It would be, yeah. Mm put onto paper. So that's the thing, wherever the blue ink is, it's a, it's an inverse. Yeah. So for instance, it would, um, and this is how manuals used to get printed, but for a service technician, they couldn't carry mm. hundreds of pages or thousands of pages of different manuals for different products. I love this little briefcase thing. Yeah, so this is a portable unit. So this is like the, do, the laptop of the 70s. You just close <laughs> that and you close that that and you pull your power cable and off you go with your portable because you imagine nowadays as a service technician I've been a service technician for 25 years nowadays I can just pull out my phone mm. before I used to have to pull out a CD-ROM yeah. with a computer and go through it but now I pull out my phone or an iPad and I can just look up any manual I want whereas in the 1970s and 80s and 90s Service technicians would have a briefcase full of documentation for certain products. They would then be able to throw that into a device like this that they carried in their vehicle mm. to actually look up the actual repair notes and uh, service products that they may not be familiar with um, off the cuff. So, really important piece of technology um, before we had digital technology in our pockets running around. Yeah. It would have really impressed people, I think. You know, if you walked into an, an office and yeah. pulled this thing out and just, you know. And I just love the fact that it's just literally it's off. You pull and then you, oh, right, and, and then the light just comes on. turns it on, and then you just go off, and you, you, you know, you just put yeah. it together. Now, the, the, the globe is moving because the globe is uh, a different type, so it's moving around, so I have to readjust it to get the light back correct. Mm. But you can see it's, it's quite, quite cool. Um, and it is, if you look in here, it is actually just a regular 12-volt, oh, yeah. 50-watt halogen lamp. There you go. So, in actual fact, a lot of these um, desktop ones are 80-watt uh, 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 or 70-watt, 21-volt lamps. They mm. look exactly the same, MR 5.3 or MR 16, depending on where in the world you are. Okay. But because this is a 12-volt, 60 or 50-watt, yeah, I should actually be able to change this to an LED globe, um, which, for a couple of reasons, a it's going to use 
90% less power, mm. but the other thing is you'll notice there's actually a lot of damage on this machine where the actual unit's been left on with oh, okay, the, light, so the heat. focus yeah. in the wrong place. So oh. the actual lamp has just blown 50 watts of um, oh. energy into the unit and melted the, the plastic. So changing it to an LED makes it way safer and um, you wouldn't believe me, you know, how much heat is coming off this unit just after a few minutes of use. So mm. it would have been quite a, um, a difficult thing to sit there and use. Mm. And this particular one is a Microforms Reader product, code 200, um, made in the USA, Washington Scientific Industrial, Long Lake, um, Minneapolis, I think, no, MN, that's not Minneapolis, it's Minnesota, maybe. And uh, yeah, and it's just a great, it's the informant. And it's a brown plastic case and it's got this actual tortoise shell strip along it. Um, I'll try and wipe that down to make it a bit more visible. You can still see it says informant on it. And it's, yeah, got this beautiful tortoise shell kind of oh, a nice. So my assumption would be based on the fact that the colour and the tortoise shell, we're probably talking early 1970s, would be Th my This guess. is 12 volts, right? This is, well, so, 240 to 12 volts, yeah. So if you, put it, if you put in an LED, you can run this on a battery, right? Because an LED of the same brightness would only chew about 7 to 9 watts, if that, this could definitely be hooked directly into a battery. So that's another thing. These units were designed to be plugged in to a power supply um, in, in a property. So, you know, you'd go to your clients and uh, you would actually have to ask them for a PowerPoint. It's not just a matter of mm. um, throwing it onto a desk. You 100% required full, you know, full line Because I just AC thought if, if we could put a battery in this, wouldn't it just... Wouldn't it just be a hoot to like take it on a train or something? You know, pull it out and just start reading your microfiche. Oh, forget that. Um, I would I would do it on a plane. The amount of uh, yeah. times in my life where I've pulled out vintage computers, particularly prototypes, on aircraft and just started using them next mm. to people in the middle of the cabin, it, it it's always an interesting and fun thing to do. Now, yeah. If we walk over here, I'll show you what the normal desktop version of a microfiche. Looks like. So this one we don't have a globe for, but this is quite easy. What you do is you put your your, your placard down there, and uh, actually, sorry, you don't do that. You do this. You put your placard in there, the same as the other machine. But the benefit of this is you then can actually just go to the page you want. So you've got your in. Oh, so this is like a little index. Yeah. On so. There. And you your crosshair or whatever is going to show which you page. You probably would have had a small nice. book telling you what each of these things had on it. So then you would go, oh, okay, I need page G10. And then you move to here and you'll get that. Um, and in very classy style of how things used to have to happen, obviously different people would put these films in a different location. If you needed to adjust this, literally just a magnetic pad ah. that you would then align to that particular thing so that you know your indices were shining through correctly and you'll notice it's in reverse because mm. when you go to the index down here it's going up to the line one yeah. in the top left hand corner and obviously inversely um, for the other stuff so it's mm. quite cool but yeah I love how just, you pull it out you pull it apart and the glass opens you insert your, your film and you close it and obviously these films, when you've got literally, you know, 100 pages mm. on these uh, pieces of film, they're super high resolution. Yeah. Um, because you can see how clear the text and the graphics are, but they're actually only, you know, each A4 page is only about a centimetre um, tall by about eight millimetres wide. Probably can't focus on it. Oh, there, there we go. go. Yeah. So you can just see how much data yeah. is actually presented on these tiny little windows. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just super cool. And just a way of doing mass storage and mass 